Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right video. Today I'm sitting down with Kevin Espiritu of Epic Gardening. What's up guys? It's uh, awesome to have him here. It's always awesome to hang out with Kevin. And today we've been shooting a few videos and then we're about to go over to my place and Kevin's gonna shoot a few videos for his channel. So be on the lookout for that content. And I'll put some links in the video description to all of that. So I just wanted to sit down with Kevin and kind of introduce him to you guys if you don't know who he is. Uh, but he runs the Epic Gardening Podcast, a fantastic everyday kind of little uh, power packed gardening episode, like 10 minutes or less every single day um, so that you guys can learn more things. I mean, I've learned so many things from that podcast where um, like most recently I learned about mason bees and ground nesting bees and how, how amazing those are. Yeah. Um, He's also got a fantastic YouTube channel for teaching us all about different gardening techniques, methods, hydroponics, apartment balcony gardening, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, and it also, of course, the Epic Gardening website as well, which is just filled with a ton of information to get you started gardening and being really successful. So, Kevin, thank you so much for being here. Dude, thank you. It's been yeah. it's been fun doing these videos. It's a throwback to how, how we first met, which was mm -hmm. basically me doing a video at your place. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, the tables have turned. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love getting to inter interview you now. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I kind of wanted to just learn more about your gardening story and how you got into all this and why why does this interest you so much? Why is your you know life dedicated to it? Sometimes? Yeah, I mean, that's a question I think I, don't, I didn't even know the answer to and maybe I'm still evolving the answer now because growing up, you would never have looked at me and said I would be into gardening. Yeah, me you too. You know, right? Like, yeah. I, I mean, I grew up in suburban Southern California here in San Diego and, you know, I was a skateboarder. I you know maybe there's a little bit like I was collecting rocks and coins so that aspect kind of triggers gardening a little bit for me okay. but no I didn't grow any plants as a kid I think the only thing we did which maybe you did as well is like that third or fourth grade science experiment where you're growing the bean mm. you're like germinating one bean <laughs> in like in like that crinkly sort of green flower potting material so it's yeah. not even able to grow in it you know yeah, what were they teaching us back then <laughs> i think they were literally just because it has to fit the california common core standard so i think they were just yeah. literally teaching us that a seed germinates and that's it yeah which was like hey i still remember it so obviously yeah. it made some impact on me <laughs> um but yeah so, so i graduated from college and at the time i had been playing online poker actually and that's how i paid for school oh, wow. um, and so that was sort of my brain was already obviously on an unconventional path of of life but I looked at the poker players who were maybe five, six years older than me still playing. And I was like, I don't want to be what these guys are doing at 26, mm. 27. It's just like just spending all their time on the computer playing a game where basically you're just taking money from worse players. Which, nothing wrong with that. We're all playing a game. But it wasn't like having any impact on anyone but myself, right? right. I was just ha taking money. That's how I earned my living. And it, there was no personal satisfaction outside of just the... the joy of mastering a skill which yeah. I'm into right yeah but for me it, that just wasn't what I wanted to do but when I quit playing poker I didn't I was like what now like I had no idea what to do mm -hmm. um, and so I maybe was designing some websites but I was sort of just like floundering and just like playing lots of video games because video games are an analog to poker it's like very similar you yeah. know but that wasn't moving my life forward at all and I was right. just spending hours and hours and hours playing video games all the time in my garage at the mm -hmm. time um, and then my brother came home from college and my mom said, hey, why don't you do something to, with Bri to get him out of the house? Because he's like playing video games too. And I was like, oh yeah, he's like really addicted to video games, isn't he? <laughs> little, dis, little does she know, which she probably knows, because moms always know, right? But I was the one who really needed to get out of the house, you know? And so I gave him a list of stuff to do, like uh, skateboarding, volleyball, surfing, whatever. Gardening, I threw in kind of, I was like, oh, what about gardening? You know, I yeah. threw it in and he perked up and he was like, yeah, like I could garden. And I was like, why did he pick that out of all the cool things I gave him, you know? Yeah. Um, but So we went down to the nursery as just first-time gardeners, just like anyone else, you know, and um, grabbed some pots, grabbed probably some, like, miracle Grow soil, and, and planted. he did basil in pots, and I did, um, I don't know what was wrong with me. I went cucumbers in a hydroponic system, like, oh, wow. right out of the gate. <laughs> um, so I got some, but they were very bitter and, like, very, very just not good. However, like the, the engine started to turn, right? Mm. And I was like, oh wow, you can manipulate the growth of a plant and you can watch it grow. Yeah. And it's, it's the most pure sort of stewardship of um, mother nature or life that you, mm. could, that you could have. 
And so from then on, I, I just got hooked in the same way I would get hooked on any other game or, you know, poker back in the day. I got hooked and... Developing a skill. It's developing a skill. And for me, it was a skill that was slower. Like, every, like everything I had been into before was skateboarding or, or video games. You knew if you were succeeding, like, right away. You try to do a kickflip, hmm. you fail. And you're like, oh, I need to do a different. Hmm. Gardening was much slower, right? Because you... Even even a quick growing plant's what the fastest plant you're ever going to get is maybe 25 days, yeah. unless you're growing microgreens. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so yeah, developing a skill and plugging, unplugging right from from the computer back into working in soil or at the time, you know, container little containers, mm -hmm. just hooked me. Um, and then my technology sort of background made me want to share it and start a website. So I started the site way back when, and it was just a hobby site. And then. You know, as things went on through my life, I tried a bunch of different business ventures, um, some successful, some not. Um, eventually joined a startup and learned a lot there. And, and then once I left that startup, I decided to, actually I was going to do something more up your alley. I was, I was thinking about the market garden front yard idea, yeah. a la Curtis Stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but Epic Gardening existed and I said, you know what, let me get this to the point where at least it sustains itself a little bit and I could survive off of it. And then maybe I can go into something more like what you're up to. Mm. But what happened with me is I just got so much joy out of doing Epic Gardening that I said, I could go into that, but it seems like this is my wheelhouse. Mm. You know, this is sort of like the space right. in this ecosystem that, that works for me. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the, I guess, long story behind yeah. it. Wow, it's really cool. It's funny. Yeah. I love hearing people's stories and how they get involved in farming and gardening because it's so, it's, in today's society, it's so unconventional to go down this route and um, and I just love hearing the reasons why people enjoy doing it so much and what, what gives them joy from doing it. Yeah. So you started with the epicgardening.com site and now you've branched out into many other areas of education and content creation. So what was the next thing that you did after the website? Oh man, that's a good question. I think the, w the website was certainly the first thing and I think from there it was YouTube. Mm -hmm. So you, my yeah. first YouTube video, I think you could trace back to maybe 2013, yeah. and it was a, oh, wow. it's a bad video. Yeah. Like I love a, watching the first YouTube don't videos. Don't watch, so do fun. not watch mine, because <laughs> not only is it bad from a production value standpoint, but the info was wrong. Oh. <laughs> so it was a video on how to prepare water for a hydroponic system, and I just flipped the process mm -hmm. the opposite way. So basically you invalidated what you did before that. Like it's te testing the pH, uh -huh. but I tested before I did something that altered the pH. Oh. <laughs> and so like, and the thing is, if you were on YouTube back then, you could almost make any video and it would do well because the space just wasn't that crowded. Mm -hmm. So that video rocketed it up. And then it actually, it was sort of like the backbone of my channel for a while <laughs> while being extremely wrong. And so I, I, I made a, I didn't delete it, but I said I redirected everyone to the new one. And it said like, hey, I've, I've changed, right? Because <laughs> I think one thing for me is, as I go through, you know, after that's the, probably the podcast and then Instagram, mm -hmm. um, you know, now books and courses and, and products even, but um, I've always just been a learner myself. And I've never said, here I am as like the, the almighty gardener, you know, like coming down and being like, this is how you do it, you know? Because mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just actively mess up stuff or try weird experiments, you know? And, you know, most experiments don't work that well. Because there's a reason why like people grow things a certain way, probably because it works really well. Mm -hmm. And so if you try something a little bit out there, maybe it works for your unique scenario, and maybe it just totally fails. So I've had a bunch of total fails, you know. Um, but yeah, yeah, YouTube was definitely the second one. Nice. Yeah, and I'm hearing, in hearing some of that, I'm hearing, you know, there's a lot, there was a lot of failure in between, you know, now and when you started. So I just always like to tell people that when you start doing something new start building a business there's going to be a massive amount of failures up front yeah yeah but the people who succeed like kevin keep going they keep moving forward they keep experimenting they never stop learning and they're always trying to improve so i think that's a really valuable uh point that, that he that i'm getting from his story mm -hmm. um so now you know it's pretty cool i've been you know this last year i've been watching or I haven't been able to hang out with Kevin that much because he's been so busy working yeah. on his book. So I kind of wanted to learn a little bit more about your book. I know I've, I've looked at it a little bit online, but kind of tell me the thought process behind making it and, and how, you know, why'd you make it and how's it gonna help people learn to garden? Yeah, so, so the book was really interesting because the tech company that I mentioned I worked at prior to doing Epic Gardening was a publishing company. And so I learned a lot about the ins and outs of 
what are some, maybe some of the flaws of publishing and some of the benefits, right? And a lot of people think books are just this amazing thing. And once you have a book, like you've made it in life. And it's true, it's cool to have, um, but definitely the world has changed as far as books go. Um, but so what made me want to write it was simply just the internal desire to have written one. It was a challenge I just wanted to undertake. And it, to me, the fact that it was about gardening at the start almost mattered less than I had the opportunity to even just challenge myself and write something like that. Um, what was interesting about it is I used to work with Mel Bartholomew, the, right. oh, the right. square foot gardening yes. guy, and I was fortunate enough to have his same publisher and editor, which was just this really sort of wow, that's really cool. random thing that like the stars aligned and it happens. But yeah, so, so I took kind of a weird tack with the book, I think, and, and we'll see if it works. Because I'm all about, and just like you on your channel, why is, why is this working, mm -hmm. not just mm -hmm. the how? Mm -hmm. And so the book contains within it no information about exactly how to grow a certain plant. So like how to germinate, like that's not in there. Um, like how to grow a tomato or how to prune a tomato. Because that info is on my YouTube channel or that info is on your YouTube channel yeah. or on any article out there. Right. So what I tried to do with the book, it's called Field Guide to Urban Gardening. It's There's three parts to it. Mm -hmm. So the first third is, I'm calling it Green Thumb Basics. So basically it's like, here's what plants need to live. What, how do plants interact with air, light, mm. water, these sorts of things. Because uh, uh, so, if you can understand the, the Lego building blocks, the foundational mm -hmm. aspects, then the questions you might have in the future solve themselves. Yes. Do you know what I mean? So kind of giving them the basic structure for how plants grow, the yeah. nutrients that they need, and then so it'll help people kind of troubleshoot and critically think about that's my gardening. goal. That's my goal. Oh, that's yeah. really cool. The goal is to, to teach, it's the whole teach a man to fish and don't give him the yes. fish type of thing, but it's just yes. teach you how to grow. So like well, I'll, in there I'll talk about soil mixes and I'll say, okay, you have sand, clay, loam. Within clay you have three different types and here's how to fix the problems if you have them. Like if you have heavy clay, mm -hmm. if don't add sand, add compost, for example, right? Um, instead of just saying like, this is the mix you should use mm -hmm. all the time. You know what I mean? Right. Which hopefully that's, that's, um, you know, that's an approach that's going to help people. Yeah, I, to me that's really important because when it comes to market gardening or, or growing vegetables in general, the context is everything. What's your soil structure? Yeah. What's your microclimate? What's your latitude on the, on the earth? All these different variables play into it. Um, so yeah, I think that's a very cool approach and a very different one that I've seen in a lot of other books. So I think yeah. it'll be pretty helpful to people. Cool, yeah, I mean, I hope so. It's it's that, and then the, the second section is just growing methods. So mm. I kind of say like, where do you live? Like, are you in a house? Are you in a townhouse? Are you in an apartment? And where you live gates the methods that are available to you. You're not doing right. a raised bed on a balcony, right? Yeah. For the most part. Right. Um, and so yeah, the second section is all methods, and then the third section is common pests, diseases, and, and mostly the more important one, I think, is like the gardener-induced problems. So like the things you do yeah, that, sure. that mess your garden up, um, which I'm sure like, you know, maybe when in your first year of garden or farming, if someone said like, here are the 10 things you'll probably mess up on your market garden, mm -hmm. like you could probably riff those right now. Then you probably made all those in the first year. So mm -hmm. like, to me, it's like, if I can get a win under your belt in the garden mm -hmm. that first year, of course you're going to want to do it again. But yeah. if you spend a ton of time like trying to grow a tomato and then you get like, you know, blossom end rot and you don't know why you got it right. and it fails and then you're like, well, screw this, I'm not going to grow again. And then we just lost you forever in the gardening world, yeah. you know? Yeah, so. and that, oh, that's so common too. I hear people like, oh, I tried to start a garden this year and I, it failed and oh, I'm so discouraged and then they just never do it yeah, again. I'm, I'm done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, um, I hate hearing that because it's like, no, just you got to keep going. You, you, need to, you need a couple seasons and then you'll get traction and you'll yeah. really start to love it. Yeah. No, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I'm sure for you it's the same and probably even faster for you, but every year or even every in San Diego, we don't even really have seasons. Yeah. So, <laughs> so for us, we have more rounds of, of going in a, in a year. Mm -hmm. But like for me, I look back every six months, I probably look back at something I did and I was like, what was yeah. that? Like, sure. why did I do that? You know, or like I was missing a, a little element of, mm -hmm. of the equation, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, every year I'm learning something else and I'm like, okay, okay. Keep it, keep ad adjusting, keep updating, you yeah. know? Yeah. That's yeah. the key to everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. So Kevin is obviously a great businessman. And so I'd like to ask him a few more questions business related because market gardening and farming is so business heavy and it's such an important piece, the sales, the marketing, all of that stuff. Um, I guess I'd like some advice for me and, and my audience of 
When you're getting started with your business, what are some maybe key pitfalls to watch out for or some strategies for planning yeah. out the beginning of the business? So I don't have a lot of tips on planning, unfortunately. I wish I had more tips on planning. I would say, man, there's so many pitfalls that you could run into. The biggest pitfall, which I'm sure you know a lot about, and I know a lot about it, is, is um, diffused focus. So you're focused on too many things. Yeah, you know? that's so, happened like, to me. I have a lot of friends of mine who are either trying to start a business, whether that be in plants or otherwise, and they're, they're thinking way too far ahead about stuff that doesn't matter today. You know, so like, imagine if, imagine if you at the beginning started a market garden and you were like, yeah, but like, what about if I'm at seven markets and then my customers can't see me at all the markets because I can't be there. It's like, mm. that might be a problem yeah. in a year and a half. Right. It's not a problem today, you know, and a lot of people think that way where they think about things that are, that are either a potential problem, maybe, but remember, like if you're just starting, do you even really know what the problems will be yet? You kind of don't really even know. And so it's just wor worrying, I call it like worrying into the abyss. You're just like worrying about stuff for no reason. And I think it's because you're most of the time either overwhelmed or afraid to just act. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, focusing on too many things, worrying about things that don't exist right now is a, is a really big one. Um, I would say for us, um, especially for me, like a, just looking at cause and effect. Like to me, that's so big. It's just, you know, I do something in the garden, it has an effect. I do something in business, it has an effect. It's, just, it's the same thing. It's just easier to see if I'm topping a pepper plant, what the effect is, right? right. But like if, if, if you decide to, um, you know, shut down a certain aspect or like maybe grow different types of plants or something, you'll see the business effect of that too. And so kind of tracking that is a really big thing. Mm -hmm. So with my business currently, I'm in a point now where I either need to maybe hire some help or I'm spreading myself a little bit too thin and I kind of need help on where do I do next? Like where do I, where do I put my focus next, I guess? Right. Yeah. Okay. So th this to me is a good sign because if that wasn't happening, the business wouldn't be doing well. If you're spreading yourself too thin and you're making, you're generating revenue, that's a good place to be. So first of all, it's a good problem to have. I think second is what I've done when this happens to me is you can sense it. It's like you're sort of fraying at the edges and you're like just, you know yeah. you're being stretched, is I will sort of take a journal out and I'll write down everything I did and how long it took for let's say like Monday through Friday, right? Mm -hmm. So for you, it's like sowing seeds, transplanting, harvesting, time at the market, time creating content, mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. And then what I would do is I would rank it from one to five of how important it is that you're the human being that has to do it. Mm, okay. so, so for me, um, in my business, it's I'm always gonna be the one growing stuff. It's my house, it's my garden, you know? Um, but that doesn't mean that I need to be the, the person editing my podcast or editing my YouTube video, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's my analog. For you, it might be something like, okay, I'm the mastermind architect behind my plot of land and my systems, I've built them out, I know exactly what I'm doing. Can I get someone to help me out? Maybe they show up at the market every now and then, mm -hmm. or maybe your charisma and your connection with the customers is makes it a five scale importance and mm -hmm. you can't give it up, right? So maybe that's a five, and maybe going out into the garden and transplanting a row or harvesting out a row or washing it or drying it, maybe that becomes the one. Yes. Um, so. Eventually you have to hire no matter what, right? Mm -hmm. The question is, and this goes back to thinking about cause and effect and like really what's mattering is, is which, which thing do you hire out? And that's how I figured out how to do it at least. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's a great tip actually. I, I'm a big fan of doing lists. I've been doing that recently where I feel really overwhelmed. I have like, like too many things on my plate. Yeah. I'll just write them all down on a list and then write a second list. Well, what do I need to get done like today or immediately basically? Yeah. And then yeah. that's been really helpful. So yeah, I'll, I'll try that ranking technique. Definitely, um, yeah. I think it's a, yeah, it's a tricky part in a business when it goes beyond just the one business yeah. owner, and then now now it's you know it's growing and it needs to kind of split. And every farm is going to get to that point at some point as well. So I think it's a good thing for us to consider. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, totally. So one other thing I wanted to pick your brain about because I know you've started a lot of different businesses is starting out. You know, what are some good tips? Oh man. Um, okay, so. If we're gonna go straight with plants, I can talk a little bit about how I started out the microgreens business that I had. And this was, I think microgreens are like a very popular 
obvious model these days. Mm -hmm. When I did it, it was 2010 or 2011. I'm not going to say it's like the first person out there. Of course not. But there were maybe six people doing it. I don't even know. It just wasn't that popular. Yeah, you know? It wasn't on the internet either. It wasn't on the internet either. Um, and so what I did, and, and this maybe you guys can learn from sort of the thought process is, I was just growing them at my house. I had, a bunch, I had like red garnet amaranth, some really beautiful varieties. The entrepreneur side of my brain said, I don't think I'm going to eat all of these. I wonder if I could sell them. And then, so that's the seed of the idea. And so it's not a, you don't, it's not some crazy business model. It's just like, I have a product, I'm going to go sell it. it there's no tech, no, it's not like the next Facebook, nothing like that. It's just like, people want this, so I'll try to sell it. So I, um, the, the most important thing, if I think back about it, is there's two little elements. The first element is the time from when I thought about that to when I started doing it was like 12 hours. So I wasn't sitting there like, I need a business card, I need a website, mm -hmm. like, ooh, I need to like research everything. What I did is I cut them, I put them on ice, actually it was like really sort of weird. I like put them in the 1020 trays mm -hmm. on ice in bowls, like this very <laughs> weird presentation that like you probably wouldn't do today. Um, but like I, I got a haircut, got a button down shirt, called up my cousin for like backup. So he was kind of like walking <laughs> behind me. And then I, w I went to the richest area of San Diego, um, Prospect Street in La Jolla, one of the better restaurant streets, mm -hmm. walked from one side to the other and just walked into every place. <laughs> nice. um, and so the time for me thinking about sell starting to sell the microgreens to trying it was like maybe 12 hours. Um, so that's really big because speed, like the thing that kills a lot of people when they're starting out is they're just thinking too much. Yeah. Analysis paralysis. The analysis correct. paralysis is so yeah. big. Like if you have an idea, you should test it as soon as possible because you're either going to find out it, it works or it doesn't work or it might work if you try it a different way. It's like mm. those are the only three things. Rather than thinking about it failing in your head and then never doing anything. Exactly. But yeah. It's, it's weird. If you ever played like The Sims as a kid or any video game, yeah. think about yourself as like a third person. Like kind of zoom out and like watch yourself. And when you're doing it that way, when you're like, oh, what about this? What about that? What you're really doing is sitting on the couch existing in your head. That's all you're doing. Um, so yeah, just go fast, like go really fast. The only other thing I would say for that business is I just thought about the customer and that's all I thought about, right? Mm -hmm. So for you at the market garden, it's the same way. Like you're not growing stuff that's cool. You're growing stuff that your market wants to buy. That's it. Like that's what matters to you, you know, exactly. um, as it should. And so for me, uh, when I went into the, the restaurant, I made sure to go at 2.30 p.m. right in between service where they're just kind of chilling and relaxing uh -huh. so I can actually have a conversation with the guy that's going to buy this, mm -hmm. the, the greens, mm -hmm. right? Which is usually the chef de cuisine, not the executive chef. It's the guy who makes the buying decisions. Um, and, and from there, I just, I just I said, here's what I've got. Here, are you into it? Are you not? Gave him the pricing. Didn't think that much about the pricing. I just kind of did a rough Google. Mm -hmm. It's like three dollars an ounce back then. I said that's what it is, um, and then they said, "Well, we want this, 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 this." I didn't have any of those seeds, and I actually froze up there because I was a little nervous. And then my cousin came in and he goes, "We got it, no problem. You'll have it in two weeks." And so then I went home. Next day, aired the seeds. It's just action. <laughs> it's like fast action, you know. And you just make it happen as quickly as you can, because the quicker you know if it's going to win or if it's going to fail, the better off. Because then you get either a victory or a failure under your belt. Either way, you're learning. Mm -hmm. And then you're off to the races and, and you know like man if you started your market garden the other way you might not even you might not even be at a market right now yeah probably you know not. <laughs> and so that to me is like if you're starting out those are my big tips cool yeah thank you kevin those are some great yeah. tips for uh, starting up a business yeah i gotta avoid the analysis paralysis and being scared this is um you know it, starting a business it, it takes courage and it's it's not easy and you got to be ready for failure and ready to adapt quickly yeah moving to the next thing yeah i mean i would almost say it's not failure that's how i think about yeah, it yeah it, it isn't yeah, yeah you're learning yeah it's just you just learn something that you didn't know before or you succeed um and that's kind of how it works mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. yeah love it